how it's shaping up. Okay. And boy, look at that lighter wood detail here. We'll stabilize that crack once we profile it and do some carving. But in this area where we can't cut through the wood, the grain's running this way on the trumpet. That's the way it has to be for strength. And that arm is supported. There's some weak grain right there. But we'll drill a pilot hole or a piercing hole, being careful to avoid the table. And I'm using a brad point bit. You don't want to round it in. That's a brad point. See those sharp shoulders? That cuts through the wood. It doesn't break through the wood. And now I release the tension, release the blade like that. And I can sight straight down that hole and ease that blade through that hole. And this is called a piercing cut. Lower the arm, bring the blade back up, lock it in the upper chuck, add some tension. And this tensioning knob back here, I need to add a little bit more tension right there. That looks good. And I'm going to raise this guard so you can see the cut on the blade. You know better than to put your fingers into that moving blade. And as long as you keep your hands on the wood and your fingers out of the plane of the blade, you're going to be in very safe control of that cut. The table is square to the blade. I'll bring the puffer up so I can see my cut line. Let's make those cuts. And there is one other thing on scroll saws. It, this is variable speed. And on this speed, I want it all the way up. And I do not want to stress the blade. I want to give that blade plenty of time to carry away the saw dust in that nine and a half tooth per inch count. And I'm just holding that workpiece flat to the table. And when I come to a curve, I just take it. And same thing, like watch this right here. You can do this, but when you do make those curve cuts, oh, shoot, now that happens. Let me show you how to fix it. Okay, I know what happened. I saw it. The blade pulled out. It didn't break. The blade pulled out of the bottom chuck. Then it broke when it was going up and down. See, it pulled all the way out. That's the bottom of the blade. So we'll get another blade in there. No harm, no foul. Rechuck it, and off we go. That's what a number 12 blade looks like, smooth on each end. And so it's up to the chuck, top and bottom, to grab the flats to hold that blade securely. And if you don't have these cranked down tight enough, it can slide out like that blade just did. So I bring the arm down like that. Then I ease the blade straight back, and I tighten that chuck. I really want it nice and tight. And so I'll get those broken blades out of the way there. And now I need to add a bit more tension, even though that's tensioned. Let me see what we have here. Just a little bit more. That seems to be right. And if it doesn't cut the way I want it to, I'll add more. You don't want to over tension it. So you just go right back in that cut line. Taking your time. And blades do wear out. Those are ultra fine blades. So that can lead to fatigue. We'll just finish these cuts now. It's so much fun. So easy to do, too. Just hold the workpiece flat to the table and the world's your oyster and keep your fingers away from the blade.